Hi to everyone coming in. Just bear with me whilst I get everything set up and make sure that my live is shared to my groups as well. Hey, El Summers. How are you? Let's see what's going on here. Hey, everyone. I'm hoping you guys are feeling pumped after this full moon. Oh, sorry. After this full moon in Sagittarius, like I've been feeling real good. I don't know why this is playing back. I didn't ask you to play back, did I? <laughs> Hi. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm hope you're well. Yes, I'm feeling so much more relieved after this whole um, full moon in forming in Scorpio energy that was hell of intense and like this coming into the waxing moon phase um into the waxing stage of the full moon in Sagittarius whoo that was a lot that was like a, a last minute purge <laughs> that I was going through that I'm still kind of feeling from um there's a lot of um exhaustion I've been extremely exhausted and I know like some of the the solar flares has played an impact to that as well. But today, today we're going to be going into the summer solstice, which is tomorrow. And this is like really exciting. Let me pause this for a moment. This is really exciting energies. This is like the high point of the year. The summer solstice is like, this is the time when the sun is at the highest point in the sky and this is where on this side of the the um hemisphere we'll be having um our longer days so this is focusing or, or highlighting vitality love abundance um you know the summer season the summer solstice this is to do with the 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 seed the seeds that we planted from the season before this is a new quadrant of the of the, the zodiac. This is a completely different shift that we're going into. And I want to talk about like cardinal shifts in a moment. Let me make sure I'm getting oh sorry, some of your comments was going missing. Hi Carlos. <laughs> um I'll go into um cardinal energies and what that means a bit later. But I'm just gonna kind of give you a bit of an overview of what it's really about, <laughs> you know, what is the essence of it? So really tomorrow, like from when the, I didn't even get check what time the sun is actually going to come up tomorrow, but at sunrise, I would advise you, I would implore you, make sure that you get up when the sun rises and just take a moment to make an intention. I'll go a bit later and I'll go into... Um, different ways that you can honor this energy because it's such a beautiful energy and um, you can use this as a wonderful catalyst to take you through the rest of the year hi Brooke I'm hoping you're cool I'm not sure why my comments keep like um going keep into the top anyway let me get into this live because I'm not sure how long this is going to be so just bear with me <laughs> but I made sure I take my notes because me as a Gemini I can fly off the handle and not um get uh hit every point i need to hit so i've made sure i've made some notes just to do that so um as i was saying this is all about highlighting the, the your life force energy and last night um i was doing some um ank breathing and lotus breathing like i've really been going deeper into my um breathing exercises i was saying um, to a few people, I feel called just to go back to the basics right now. Because sometimes we get so focused and so caught up on the complex sides of spirituality and all these types of things, and we kind of miss like the the really basic foundation level stuff. And uh, telling you, I had some really really powerful powerful um, experiences with that, um, like doing life force breathing as well. So I was really trying to focus on charging up and being able to connect to my own life force energy within and being able to charge that and literally reverberate it around my whole being and use that as a tool for manifestation as well. So I went yesterday and I was doing, not just yesterday, from the from the full moon, I've been doing a process of um, 
manifestation rituals. Um, so you would have seen my little fire thing that I had up yesterday. It was so beautiful. I didn't even get to catch the fullness of that flame, but that was amazing. <laughs> and it's just a testament to the types of energies that we're in at the moment. Really, really conducive, really, really powerful. So in earlier times um, in the summer solstice, um, this was marked as the beginning of a new season. So we've come out of spring, summer is the beginning, so the summer solstice is the beginning of the summer season. So um, this season is where they would reap their harvest, hence why we've just come out of the harvest moon, the strawberry moon. Um, there would be like an abundance of harvest and this, so it's so in the spirit, so in the physical, they say as above, so below. So as there's, um, this is the perfect, astrology is based on agriculture as well, so let me just put that out there. Um, but we are the earth, we are a reflection of the earth, so whatever happens in the earth will happen in, it, in us. So as this is a time where um, we're moving into this whole abundant season, we now have to now align ourselves with this um, this light that is shining on the possibilities of abundance, because the abundance can be there, but you may not receive abundance if you don't know how to actually take it or take what's yours. You know, if you don't really know how to really tap into the essence of manifestation and things like that. Hi, Lamar. I'm hoping you're well and being able to come into my life today. Um, so, yeah, this is also a time where they also would, um, they would restock their food. So this is a time where even though you're harvesting, you're still setting up for seasons to come. So you're not just like, okay, this is a big bang and then that's it. This is where you stock up and you prepare for the next season. But also harvest from the season that has come before. And we'll go into that a bit more as well because the solar, the solar eclipse will be coming up next month as well. So there's a lot, and Neptune retrograde. So there's a lot of energy that's going on in the cosmos right now that is just causing us to just really shift out of our comfort zones and um, come into um, a different polarity of our lives. So for ritual purposes, so for you to be able to take um, uh, reverence this day, um, our ancestors always did a, com a commemorative ceremony for the summer solstice. And you'll also look at um, Stonehenge, Stonehenge, I'm in the UK, so Glastonbury. That is where um, typically they would have a lot of um, ceremonies, but it's interesting that it's, um, it brings up Stonehenge. Stonehenge is the heart chakra of the earth. Okay, Glastonbury is actually the heart chakra of the earth. So as just like we have chakras within our body, Mother Earth, Mother Gaia, she has chakras too because she's a sentient being in herself. So Glastonbury is like the highlight point of the solstice, solstices. <laughs> and this is bringing our, our attention to our heart space and be, it, it's almost like the light that comes up on our heart because um, the next season after this is Leo. And Leo um, is all about um, love and expression, you know, being able to express yourself in, in, in the expression of love. Um, so we'll go into like Leo a bit later when I kind of go into the next, um, what's going to be coming through the next seasons going forward. But back to the ritual. So the it's best performed um, just at the moment where the, where the sun um, rises and you can go and light yourself a candle, you know, like um, symbolic of that that life is again fire, that initiating energy, that cardinal energy um, that's able to, um, to, to, to spark change. So light a candle as the sun rises um, and just allow yourself to, to come into a place of gratitude. I don't know how many people actually do gratitude um, practices daily, but we need to come into a, 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 a habit of having a grateful heart because a lot of us, we want to be able to manifest. Um, oh, sorry, I live in a mad area. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, a lot of us want to be able to manifest 
these elaborate things, these um, amazing things, these amazing life purpose, purposes, um, these amazing opportunities. Um, but we forget to honor what's already, what, what we have already um, manifested previously. So, you know, you could be wanting this, but you haven't actually realized actually last month I did want this and this came through. It may not have been a big thing, but I still need to be able to um, express gratitude towards it because that in itself, being able to um, be grateful, you're creating space, you're creating capacity to um, be able to receive more, you know? So that's your way of being able to give back to the universe as such to be grateful for everything that has happened thus far, all of the um, all of the things that you've been able to attain thus far, so that you can make space for what more is going to come on the other side of this solstice. So definitely utilize that energy. Um, I've gone through that. Oh, this is an amazing time to sun gaze as well. So definitely sun gazing at um, sunrise or sunset. Um, for a few seconds, um, that would be amazing because that is actually dealing with activation, um, code code your own DNA activation. Um, the sun itself is a it's a it's a conductor. Um, so, sorry, I don't know what is going on around me, and I don't want to stay distracted. Um, what was I saying? Activation. So definitely um, pay attention to that. Thank you, Ty. Um, definitely take some amazing deep breaths as well. We don't take, this is why I'm going into um, more breathing exercises now because um, one thing that Spirit was bringing to my attention is that sometimes we, can we actually live life in anxiety because we forget to take breaths. We forget to actually pay attention to what is our life force energy, which is our breath. Like our breath is what keeps us alive. But sometimes we never think about our breath until we're in threat of losing it, either through death or whether you've got asthma, whether you're out of breath and you need to be able to think about your next one, like when you're gonna get your next one. We never, we never, if your breathing is okay, you never really have to think about that. You just automatically just going through life, you know? But sometimes we need to actually check in and be like, actually, what is keeping me alive like tune into that energy that actually is keeping you alive keeping you um regenerative um and this is where these breathing um exercises can actually help with that as well so definitely take a take um take a lot of deep breaths and if you can go into breathing exercises as well that's amazing i'll give you one um basic breathing exercise that you can try and this is from um this is a mindfulness technique, um, and it's called the four, seven, eight technique, where you can te you take in a breath for four seconds, so you count in one, two, three, four, hold your breath for eight seconds, hold, and then you breathe, sorry, hold your breath for seven seconds, and then you breathe out for eight. So you can do that maybe three to four times, maybe wouldn't um, advise any more than that if you haven't, um, if you don't, do this exercise a lot because you could get really um, lightheaded, but it's a good time to just really take some time and just um, be mindful of your breath. Yes, Prana. Oh, you're from Harlem. Oh, welcome. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely pay attention to that energy. That's what keeps you alive and um, that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Thriving, not thriving. There's a word I'm looking for. I can't bother to look for it right now. <laughs> but um, you guys know what I mean. Um, so yeah, um, gratefulness. And really savor these these moments as well. Um, savor the moments that you're creating in terms of what you're grateful about. Because that in itself can be a charge for manifestation. You know, you're filling yourself up with the energy that you want to be able to carry forward. So definitely hold on to that energy and there's some other techniques as well that i've been going into um that has been helping me dealing with that charge um, i'm not going to speak about them on this live i will speak about them in my inner realms group which are um on facebook so 
you guys can go into that group so I'll do that in a bit more of a private space so that's kind of a bit about the solstice and now we're going to move into the solar eclipse so <laughs> the universe has always got some next transit that's we can to just make us swerve a little bit <laughs> and this one's going to be really really interesting um solar uh solar eclipse in, in cancer so this is going to shift you completely out of your comfort zone especially coming out of the full moon in sagittarius where it's like okay like now i i'm i've i've dealt with what's been keeping me or I've, i'm aware of what's been keeping me um limited um by all these um unresolved tra unresolved traumas unresolved um emotions and things that have come to the surface in scorpio so where sagittarius are like okay you shed it and now you're going through this baptism of fire this initiation of fire where you're going through this refinement process and you're like okay then it, there's a there's a completely new um there's a new uh, uh, a drive that I have to be able to achieve these new goals and these new dreams that you've been able to cultivate within these, this season. And now you're being tested to be able to move, to be able to shift. Um, solar clips, these energies last usually for about six months. So this is, this is intense. And this... Um, solar eclipse if you look back to what happened in your life in january 2019 which was the last solar eclipse these are the things that you're going to be resolving um from this solar eclipse and i can tell you that that's been really intense for me as well because the stuff that came up for me back at the beginning of the year has come up for me but in a different way but it's also being able to to see my growth of my transition of that whole journey in itself so this is this is this is going to be a test but you don't also you want to be aware because um, cancer season this is again on the topic of manifestation cancer is an amazing um projective energy now there's two sides to this because you can have negative protect sorry you can have negative projections and you can have positive projections you just want to make sure that you're staying on to one side of those projections because one can be very self-destructive and you don't want to go down this path in this this season so definitely be aware of that definitely be aware of um of of um like almost victimhood traits um, because this is again is something that we're clearing out this need to um, always affirm yourself as a victim or even just um, always um, attracting situations that allow you to be a victim that in itself is very toxic because if you're if you're constantly attracting situations where you're a victim there's something that you're attracting. It's not something that is external from you. So now that's something, and this is something I've had to be dealing with since January 2019 because there was an aspect of that I didn't even realize was there. Um, I was attracting all these situations and I was like, but I'm, I, I didn't warrant this, but actually when I don't, when I'm, when I'm not putting, if, if I put myself in situations where I don't, um, I spoke about this in my personal shadow work video. You can find this on my YouTube page on Soul Dash Reconnection. And I was speaking about um, sometimes, especially those that have gone through sexual abuse, um, you go through life and because you've gone through this experience of freezing, you find it hard to be able to get out of that later in life and continually through your life. So you keep freezing in situations where you're, um, where you're, you, you are being, made a victim but you're allowing yourself to be made a victim because you're not actually allowing your um yourself to affirm yourself in that state and be like actually no that's not going to happen i'm not a victim so this doesn't need to take place right here you know so this is a lot of things that this is going to be bringing up bringing up in this period um 
And also, eclipses are not to be feared because sometimes when this, this conversation comes up, up about eclipses, it's like, oh my gosh, shit, what's going to happen? Like, what's going to what's gonna leave? What's a, do you know what? Life happens and allow yourself to go through the process of life. Everything happens for a reason, whether it's to bring illumination to one area or if, if, if it's to, you know, like, because sometimes again especially with this energy it's it's forcing us to shift because sometimes we can make our our pain more comfortable than it needs to be we you know we're experiencing um certain situations that we're not happy in but instead of actually finding ways to completely eradicate ourselves from the situation we'll find ways to make ourselves more comfortable in it oh let's go get a sofa you know let's go get a comfortable bed you know no 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 this is this is this is this can be the trait of of cancer you know you 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 um because it's familiar you'll stay with it so we have to remember not to allow ourselves to stay in that energy so cardinal energy in itself so cardinal um, cardinal sh um points so back to the the solstices um the solstice are, um, sorry, not the solstice. The card, the cardinal points are placed at specific points um, in the zodiac. So you'll see this in your chart as the ascendant, which is the first house, the IC, which is the fourth house, um, the descendant, which is the seventh house, and the midheaven, with it, which is the tenth house. So this is Aries, Cancer, Libra. Capricorn, you guys are cardinal energies. You have the power to be able to um, <laughs> historical, yeah, girl. <laughs> um, you have the power to initiate um, this, 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 um, this shift, this movable energy. You know, so this, these points in the the zodiac collectively, they create these points um that help to shift our direction the cardinal points is also like to um to do with direction so north east south and west so these points are specifically in place to um help to guide us so you may not like some of the stuff that comes but it's to guide it's to make you aware it's to um you know give you the opportunity of a different perspective so these points are extremely crucial to someone's life so as the sun is moved has moved what well, is moving into cancer we're being asked to really get in touch with yourself because cancer cancer is very you know it can be very emotional at times but you know, it, it really can get touch, in touch with what is at home. And they say home is where the heart is. And it, this is all um, bringing up that type of energy. What is it that you call home? Like, what is home to you? Not just your physical home. Um, even with regards to some of the, the readings that I brought. Sorry about this noise. This is crazy. Some of the readings that I did um, in the forming in Sagittarius, they were talking about um, creating a sacred space and being able to call that home, whether that's a sacred space within yourself that you can go into in meditation, you know, you can even create like a sacred space in the ash, in the ash rooms. when you, when you go, you can do lucid dreaming and when you go into your dreams and you go into the astral, actually create, see yourself creating a space, like actually create sacred spaces wherever you are you have the opportunity to be able to do that so whew, where are we? okay so we have been called to get in touch with ourselves and, and how you channel your energy so be conscious of the direction because there's a polarity to everything um negative and positive again i don't really like the words negative and positive because i don't really feel um, anything is negative or positive, but it's just a polarity in itself that we do need to be aware of. Um, so allow yourself to acknowledge who are you 
who are you separate from your pain like begin to 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 see who you are from everything that you've released like now you're cultivating the new aspects of your diet your identity like the pain that is not to say that you forget about it and you completely cast it into the sea but you no longer have the attachments to it the net the the emotional attachments that whenever you start thinking about things you start going into these negative spirals these are the things that we need to be aware of um allowing yourself to add to um to identify what is it that you can potentially do with this new identity what does this new identity hold um you know what is the the heights you can reach with this new identity like really explore this and i found myself when i did back the the challenge from my last um forming in sagittarius video um when i we literally wrote um uh like prophetically wrote our future that in itself was so liberating for me because i've, I've again it's sometimes we we hold ourselves to um these lives these life um scripts that are not beneficial for for us anymore this just keeps us again on this lower um the lower polarity of our experience so being able to free free myself from that literally just put me in a whole completely different space that i'm so grateful from oh where am i broadcasting from i'm from london so <laughs> i'm out in london at the moment um also evaluate what has been your limitations and what do you need to put in place to eradicate them because it's all good being able to identify them but what are you going to do about it like really allow yourselves to come up with a plan come up with a solution um i'm here to assist anyone who doesn't really know how to be able to do that i can understand because initially at the beginning i didn't even know where to step my foot <laughs> I really didn't um, but as time went on it became easier and I also had mentors as well that I was able to reach out to so even though I did this a, a lot of this by myself I did have some assistance in that so you know if you ever do need um, assistance I'm always here to help with that um, what else is on my notes oh so back onto the challenging like challenging channeling so focus on challenge channeling things that make you feel good so this is this is again the sun is at the highest point in the sky summertime this is when everyone's just like starts to come out of their shell this is when you know like people start to come out of their houses sometimes you don't see anyone all winter long or just about spring but when summer comes you see everybody <laughs> because it's a beautiful season so you know, this is the time when we really want to be just feeling good. So focus on the things that actually is going to make you feel that energy that um, you're seeking. Like, what's going to make you feel good? What, what, what? I've um, again, um, hobbies. Like, pick hobbies that are not um, work related. I realized that I had a lot of hobbies that were work related, so it didn't actually do the justice that hobbies actually do, which is allow you to have like that time out. So whether you like being creative, say like you're a singer like me, um, like me, or you do something else, and you're like, okay, let me just try something different. That's still artistic, um, but is not what I normally do. Whether it's painting a painting, or whether it's making a pottery pot, <laughs> whether it's um, you know doing something completely abstract, like I don't know. Um, one of the stuff you see on group one, I ain't been that active. <laughs> You see some random stuff like some some creating workshops. I don't know. Try something. I think I'll actually like look into that myself because I'm really looking into like really just shifting my whole energy and my whole focus, but having different influences that's been able to sh to help that shift. So definitely pay attention to that. I've gone through that. So all oh, so cancer season um definitely time to get in, in touch with the heart but this is cancer is a very intuitive sign um it's the most intuitive sign, sign out of all of the zodiac um so this is a time where 
you definitely want to pay attention to your dreams um, and any messages that may come up. But also with this, um, let me put a disclaimer. Um, you don't want to, there's a, there's a fine line between, um, in intuitions, because some people can lay, can lean more to judgment and some people can lean more to discern, uh, lean more to discernment. Discernment is where you want to be. You don't want to be in a place where you're judging, you're judging a situation more, um, wrong. And that's based on your insecurities. And now you're, um, projecting those negative projections onto someone else that's not we want not we want what that's not what we want to be doing <laughs> but we do want to be coming in deeper into our discerning abilities um because there's a lot of potential messages that are going to be coming out in this month um that will help you but you just need to pay attention and also even um to uh, summer solstice even tomorrow when you go out tomorrow like to um, go out and actually listen to nature, listen to the birds, listen to, um, if you're by a stream, listen to the water. What does it sound like it's saying to you? What does it sound like it's communicating to you? Um, everything communicates. I love, I keep using this reference because I absolutely love it. But there's a reference on um, Pocahontas where the, the tree godmother, grandmother, um, she sings a song and she's saying, um, um, Anna, listen with your heart, you will understand. So it's saying, listen with your heart. Um, and she's looking at all of, all of nature speak and it's having all of these messages and she, all she has to do is pay attention. You know, the universe constantly speaks, but we just don't, we don't tune into the right frequency. So right now, focus on tuning into the right frequency. Um, if you haven't meditated in a while, this is definitely the time where you want to be doing that. So um, I've actually set myself a few challenges to up my meditation time um, and even increase it, which is really difficult, especially now that I'm a mother of a very, um, very high spirited toddler. <laughs> so it becomes quite difficult sometimes. But again, this is... Um, something that I have to I have to put in place because this is this is what's going to make me feel good this is what's going to make me feel more connected to myself so that is definitely down okay so the same day as the solstice um <laughs> you going on the same day as the solstice um Neptune is also going to be going retrograde. I'm going to be doing a separate video on Neptune retrograde because that's going to be hell of a t intense. But this is going to be an amazing time for any of my artists out there. Um, amazing time to channel some art. Um, you'll definitely be able to reach some interest in depth with that. So that's going to be amazing. So creativity, even manifestation, it's going to be an amazing time for that. Um, and the veil is going to be extremely, extremely thin. So this is why it's going to be amazing for all of these things. Um, so I'm just seeing some of these messages. Oh, okay. Um, so this is going to be strong throughout um, the rest of the month. So especially whilst um, Neptune goes, um, has gone retrograde. And it's going to help us filter through a lot of things that we've been confused about for a while. Because, again, this is bringing up um, the Zemo. Um, but you're finally, you're finally going to be able to dig through those elite or see through those illusions. It may create some illusions elsewhere until Neptune fully goes direct. You know, so definitely be, be mindful of that. But overall, um, it's going to be a place where a lot of clarity is going to be restored. The illusions that we've created for ourselves is going to, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be really, really interesting. So just allow yourself to be open in this energy. Um, right, I'm going to skip out all of this. 
So moving on to the next season, or not the next season, but the next um, few months. So this is the second quadrant, we're in the second quadrant um, of the zodiac. So this is where we're dealing with Cancer Leo, Virgo, and sorry, Cancer Leo, Cancer Leo and Virgo. Um, and this is dealing with the intense um, participations of life. So this is to do with like our relationships, um, our close, especially our close relationships, whether family, whether um, in, in partnership and relationships. Um, it's going to be bringing up a lot of, you know, there's going to be a lot of feminine energy going around. So you're going to be in your feelings and you're going to be, you know, there's going to be some some aspect of, okay, this, I, I want to have some nurture. Like, I want to have some, you know, some, 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 some intimate, intimacy time, you know, whether, and if you are not, um, if you're not in a relationship, definitely don't use that as a thing to kind of be like, oh, well, I'm not in a relationship, so what can I do? Uh, you? <laughs> this is the best time to get to know you. If you don't know how to know yourself, how are you going to get to know someone else? So, but this is this is a beautiful, beautiful time, especially if you're um, in your family. Take time to, like, really develop some relationships in your family. Go and go out, you know, go out with your family and try and maybe some of the people that you can mend relationships with, like actually go and have those conversations, you know? So cancer needs that, that nurturing deep experience and it needs its family, it needs that support. So that's gonna be this season. Um, Leo is gonna be about us being able to follow our hearts, <laughs> you know, and being true. Um, and not allowing, um, the conflict of the mind to take over again with its opposite polarity of Aquarius, um, and also to um, share your feelings of love with those who actually trigger that energy with you. Like, pay attention to those who actually triggers that loving energy energy within you. There's a few people, whether it's your friends or whatever, you just go and speak to them, and you're like, oh, I just feel this. Mm -hmm energy it's beautiful just surround yourself with that allow yourself to be charged by that but don't steal their energy because i know some people can literally be some energetic vampires because someone has good energy and you just want to take all their energy for yourself please don't do that please don't do that equal exchange equal exchange <laughs> um and so Virgo, we're moving into Virgo season, this is all about our service. So this is about how we can help those we love, you know? So how we can help um, things become easier for ourselves, but also for the people that we, we deeply care about. So that's going on, that's a kind of like a really, really condensed version of what's happening in these next um, few months. Um, again, I will go and do much more in-depth videos, again, with like Neptune Retrograde and all the other um, different transits that will be coming up. But that's kind of it for now. So definitely, this is this is on my Facebook, right? Yes, it is. So those who are not subscribed to my YouTube, please subscribe. I'm almost at my first 100 subscribers on my first month, which I'm really proud about <laughs> because I've actually seen the progression. So... I'm going to be doing a giveaway um, for the 100th subscriber. Well, not for the 100th subscriber. When the 100th subscriber come, I will be doing a giveaway. So definitely pay attention to, to the information that will be coming from that. And um, again, if you need any readings, I will be doing, I may do a summer solstice reading um, upload. I may. We'll see. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> but I will be offering summer solstice readings um, um, through my website, www.soul-reconnection.com. I will be doing them through um, the intuitive oracle sessions. So if you want to be able to understand what is this shift going to be for you in this next season, 
what is it that you need to pay attention to what is it that you're not aware of how best can you transmit this energy definitely contact me on my website again it's www.soul-reconnection.com um and that would that can give you a bit more clarity and we continue these conversations on my group which is inner realms <laughs> and you can find that on facebook so inner realms and then yeah i think that's it so i'm hoping that this made sense for you guys and i'll catch up with you guys soon yeah.